Welcome to the city shed. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, the big thing that's been going on a lot lately, the past year, two years, is the cattle panel trellis. And there's good reason for that. They have become very handy, not only for looks, to make your garden look a little cleaner and neater, but they've become a very vital tool for urban homesteaders such as myself and just urban gardeners in general as they can really maximize your vertical growing space and give you a whole new opportunity of growing vegetables in different ways and reconfiguring your garden to get the absolute most that you can out of it. So what I thought I would do today is give you a little video about how I build my kale panel trellises and how I actually transport them to my house using only my SUV and myself. So we do a little bit different than what everybody else does. Usually people buy the 16 foot cattle panel that you put all the way in a nice smooth arch. But I have found that for me and my situation, two eight foot panels actually are better. And I'm gonna give you another reason why you should do two eight foot panels as opposed to the 16 foot panels. So stay tuned to the video and I will show you that little tip and trick and you guys let me know what you think if you like it or not so let me uh, take you over to the car and show you how we load these into the car Okay, so as you guys can see, I have eight foot panels in here and all I'm doing is folding them over and I use a ratchet strap to close them down. And on these ones, I've staggered them. So I have one loop going the one way and the other loop going the other way. And I actually have six panels in here, which can make three uh, trellises out in the, the garden there. So pull one of these guys out. <laughs> There you go, somewhat manageable. You got a little ratchet strap on here to hold them closed. And all we're doing is when we stack three on top of them, we put our foot in the middle, grab one side, and we just kind of fold it over, and then we put our strap on. And you don't have to use a ratchet strap. If you had some kind of bungee cord or something you could wrap around there, something just to hold these somewhat closed to make this uh, oval shape on them, you'd be good to go. So I drug it out to the backyard, as you can see, I like to put my arm kind of through, I kind of lift it like this. It's not bad to carry around that way. Show you the actual shape that it makes. So it makes just this oval, and it's found it really easy to put these in my car staggered with the loop side on each opposite end. And I think I could actually do a third stack of them so I could possibly get nine of these maybe home, possibly ten, if I tried to put four into a uh, stack and tension them. Three was kind of difficult. Normally I do two and two. I can make two panels that way. And I know that the eight foot panels are a couple dollars more than if you just bought one 16 foot panel. But to me, the couple extra dollars is it worth it for the convenience of having to, being able to just do it on my own with my SUV. I fold the seats down, I can slide them in the back in this shape, come home, unpop them and put them up right away. Uh, whereas if I had to get 16 foot panels, I'd have to find somebody with a truck, somebody with a trailer, possibly rent a trailer, which is another expense on top of it. So if you're gonna spend extra money to get the 16 foot home, you could spend just as much and get the eight foot panels and make your own 16 foot panel uh, arch. So that's kind of my thoughts on it. Other people might think differently, but 
to me, a couple extra dollars here or there for convenience is not something that I worry about. Okay, so I just squeeze them tight with my hand, then undo the hook, and do it from the other side. And I kind of, they're gonna have some tension on them, so you gotta better be careful. And this is the other thing that we get into now that we've done this, is that now we kind of have a bend here. What I would suggest is if, if you can, bring them home set them out like this now as you're unfolding them these have been in my car a little while so they're really kind of rigid in that shape now usually they're still somewhat springy just spring them open set them down and then i literally just step on the middle now that i got it flat if you really wanted to make sure that these were flat and how they would be you can let them sit probably for a day or two and they will kind of flatten back out maybe put a little weight in the middle or what I have done on a couple of them too is also try to just bend it a little bit the other way to get that straight edge on it again and it's worked uh, the bend doesn't bother me that much uh, if anything sometimes I use it for my arch to belly it out a little bit or I've used it on the other side to act as the tension going outward on it but that's how we do that get it there and that uh, out of the car into the yard flatten it back out now I'll show you how I put it up and the reason that I want to use eight, two 8 foot panels more than I do the 16 foot panels. So I'm going to go grab the other ones, get them in the same state, and then we'll go working on that. I can't believe it. I told him he could come and pull off the hair because he loves to pull my hair. And he said no. I don't think this bowl is big enough. Oh, yes it is. It's a little bit shady in this area right here right now so hopefully you can see me pretty good i'm standing between two of my little raised beds and i'm going to put a panel right here to show you one of my ideals with it and theories on different ways i can use this panel and because i do mine differently than most people most people use the t-post and they kind of put it inside of the raised bed whereas i do mine outside the raised bed and i actually nail the bottoms right to the raised beds and that's where I get some more flexibility out of it. I think for different ways I can use it. Now the T-posts are nice and I don't object to them. In fact, I have uh, one panel that does have T-posts to kind of hold it upright a little bit better. And it's more of a permanent structure. I don't ever plan on moving it. Whereas the panels I put here, I might possibly use uh, in other ways. So I want them to be able to open, close and do different things. So. Let's go ahead and get what we gotta do. We're gonna put this first panel up. Now, I like to nail them in with these double barbed fence staples. I find that these work really good. They hold it very well into the wood. It kind of got barbs on it that help it grip so it doesn't come out very easily. Now usually we'll put three of these at the bottom of a panel and I've had no issues yet with them pulling out or anything like that once the panel is up. If I do have anything like that happen, then I will find a different way to hold them into the bottom of the beds. But for now, this has worked really well for me. Now I got the panel secure at the bottom. They're both kind of leaving the opposite way. 
this is what I really wanted to show you guys. This is the thing that I like the eight foot panel ideal for because I think I can do different things with it. And one of those things is if I connect them in the middle with some tie wraps, I can easily cut those tie wraps and reconfigure the way these are. So what I would like to do is be able to cut the middle of this, take this panel and now bend it over top of the smaller bed and then fasten it back to the outside. Now, all I need to do at this point is throw some plastic on top of this and close up my ends and I have a low tunnel for growing in the fall and winter or even in the spring. And what I can do is I can start my vine and plants inside toward the edge there. And then when it comes time, I can take the plastic off, take them off of this side, put it back up and connect it to the middle. And I think this could really change the way uh, you use your garden, especially for us northern people. We see these things and they're used mostly just for the vine plants to climb up and have a place to go, which is a really good use for them in the city. But as far as being able to double use these panels throughout the summer and fall and you know winter basically, I think that's where they have the most benefit. So when you're paying that extra couple dollars for the eight foot panels, it's seeming like a bummer, but you have the opportunity to use this panel for a low tunnel to help you grow a longer season. And I think that's where we get a lot of benefit out of it. Now, depending on what size bed you have, my beds are two and a half feet, so my arch is a little high. I do have one in the back that's a four foot bed and the arch is a lot lower and I could easily, you know, grow lettuce and stuff in there. We're probably gonna do that this winter. We hadn't last winter just because we had just put it up and we ended up putting garlic in there. So couldn't really use it in the fall or winter because garlic was in there. But this year, we're gonna explore this idea more of low tunnels out of these cattle panels and then being able to readjust them in the summertime to be able to use them as a climbing trellis. And that's my biggest benefit with the Aquas. I love the idea of that. I think it's a really good plan. Uh, some of these beds kind of have double on them, so I will have to figure out a way to do it. But when I do my back area, I will definitely lay out my beds to where these are only be used the two ways that I want to use them and not be overcrowded with them. But I like to have a lot of them because I can grow a lot of vining things and get a lot of use out of the vertical space in my garden. So let's go ahead and get some tie wraps. We'll tie wrap this at the top and we'll wrap up how we do so this. So when it comes to this part, this is probably the trickiest part of it all is you're bending these things and we're gonna do a little bit of a, a flat top at the top on it. So when you're bringing them down, butt up against each other. What I like to do is get them lined up and I'll hold one side like that. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. So I kind of got it the top of this one to the first bar on the other one. Put my tie wrap on there. So I do the one in the middle and I do one on each end. So now that we got the tricky part done where we actually lined up the top of this panel to the first set of bars down this way. Put our three tie wraps in the hole of this way. So I'm gonna pull this thing toward me. I got this little flap up here. I'm actually pulling that down into that first set of bars on the other panel. And then we're gonna tie wrap that also So this is where having a little bit of help would be a little bit useful because if you were holding it, somebody else could put the tie wraps on. But I have done this, all of these panels by myself. It's a little tricky, but it can be done. A lot of people use the wire tie. Wire tie is probably a really good idea. Something that'll last a long time. I use these tie wraps because I work in an industry where these are just randomly available all the time. So I have bags of them for projects that I do at work. So that's why I use them. So there is our arch. You can see this. Now my uh, walkways are pretty narrow. If you had a wider walkway, probably be a little bit better of making a good arch. Mine, I kind of got to pull in a little tight. Uh, I made my walkways originally about a few inches bigger than my push mower because I originally thought I was going to push mow in between all these raised beds and then 
Uh, I changed that up and I did wood chips in the middle of everything. So, <laughs> so as uh, the garden always evolves, you know, some plans that were made previous don't always get uh, updated and don't work as well on the next one. So this is one way of doing it in between the aisle ways. The other way of doing it be over top of a one single bed. So I'm gonna do that now, throw it up real quick and I'll show you it when it's done. Whew, I am sweating like a stuffed pig, man. This happens in summer. I sweat really bad and it's like the middle of the day so it's the hottest out. But we got this other panel up. Can you see it? <laughs> So it's up and it's over top of this one single bed. You can see two sides of the panel there. And I'm gonna use that to climb. And if you recognize this bed at all, it is from the micro garden, where somebody suggested in the comments, the bitty bed. <laughs> uh, this is an experiment bed. I'm loading this thing up beyond all get out. I'm throwing away all the rules to square foot gardening and I'm going with square inch. How much can I really produce jam packing this, uh, this bed here? So. We just planned it out. The video is up. I will post a link here for it if you guys want to see that. It's uh, kind of interesting. The first video is a little boring. I just kind of go through and I tell you what I'm planting, why I'm planting it, and there's no frills to it. Uh, the update, I'll make sure it's a little more entertaining for you guys. <laughs> but this is up now. I got to go grab more zip ties because I didn't bring enough out here to finish the top up. But this is another option is if you put it over top of a, a garden bed, you can use all the space in it. One of my plans is that the squash is going to grow up on this outside and the beans on the other side. I want to use those as shade for some of the lower greens that need the shade. Kind of create its own little super ecosystem in here. Have enough shade. We've got nitrogen with beans and all that. And that's what I'm hoping this panel will do. And that's what I've done on a couple other different beds is I plant squash on it and then I plant salad greens in the middle and it seems to keep it a little bit cooler during the summer they don't bolt as fast as they used to so i have been noticing that that's a good use for it so this is two ways that i use these cattle panel trellises for arches in my garden i have a couple other ways that i'm using them this year but you're gonna have to tune into some more videos for those so one of them will be in the garden tour and the other one will be another special video coming out and hopefully i can get that done this week this weekend maybe next week it'll be out uh, after this one it'll definitely be after this one <laughs> so keep a lookout for it all right guys well that's all I got today on the cattle panel trellises I just wanted to show you how I did it a little more in depth I know this is a rehash of an older video many of you have maybe seen that this is more strict to the point showing you the little steps that I do and how I put it up so this is a better reference video the other one's more of a vlog that we just did this in so I wanted to show you what it looks like in the car, how I put it up, my thought on why I do it the way I do it. And hopefully you guys get a little something out of this. Hopefully this is something that my fellow urban gardeners look at and say, hey, I see the good possibilities now. And you don't have to feel left out because you can't get 16 foot cattle panels to your house. <laughs> so if you've got an SUV or even a minivan, we'll probably be able to fit these things. Just gotta be careful putting them in and out because the ends are a little sharp and they will scratch the plastic. So. Just got to be a little careful, but it's definitely doable to get arch trellises in your garden, uh, even if you don't have a truck. And that's it. That's all I got. See you guys later.